Paladins and Cavaliers are very strong units in Age of Empires 2, having high combat stats and speed and therefore being very population efficient. Now, I've already looked at their strength comparison in a previous video by comparing all Civs, Paladins, and Cavaliers to generic, fully upgraded Paladins' performance. This showed us how much certain upgrades, such as Blacksmith techs and the Paladin upgrade itself, affect the survivability and damage output of these heavy cavalry units. However, in that previous video, I did not address when you'd actually get the upgrade, and so let's do that now. It's a very difficult and therefore very tough question to answer, but I think I can use some math to kind of get a general idea. However, I know that math simply isn't enough to answer this question, and as such, I interviewed Tato, one of the best players in the entire world, in order to get his expert opinion on this map. So make sure you stick around for the entire video, because you definitely don't want to miss this. To start off, I would suggest that you watch my previous video on this topic, because I'll be building on the data that I've already collected. That video is a bit long, I will admit, but basically I used math to generate a percentage relative to a generic, fully upgraded palette. For example, a fully upgraded Cavalier is only 58% as good as a fully upgraded Paladin at surviving Arblasts, but it's 79% as good at dealing damage to them. Now, to see how much worse a Cavalier is than a Paladin in total versus Arbalests, we could average the percentages for survivability and damage output. However, this does not give an accurate result. Think of it this way. The Cavalier only has 58% of the survivability of the Paladin. While it does have a higher percentage for its damage output, this percentage is still lower than the Paladins, and as such, the Cavalier should be less than 58% as good overall versus Arbalests. Instead, if we multiply these two percentages, we see that versus Arbalests, the Cavalier is only 46% as good as the Paladin. Now, I understand that there are variables such as lag or player micro that I can't mathematically account for, but just by looking at the statistics of these units, this is the percentage that I get. From this, we would expect two things. First, when looking at equal-sized armies, we would expect the Cavaliers to perform 46% as well. However, we would also expect a Cavalier army and a Paladin army that's only 46% as large to perform identically versus Arbalests. Now, keeping this in mind, let's look at the cost of the Paladin upgrade. It costs 1,300 food and 750 gold. If you value both resources equally, for this price you could either get the Paladin upgrade or you could create 15 extra Cavaliers. This means that we can create an equation to show the desired numbers of Paladins and Cavaliers to achieve an equal power level. We can do this by having the number of cavalry that are paladins, and divide this by the number of cavalry that are cavaliers plus 15. This should equal the percentage we get. Now, if we use some ultra-complicated and super-secret math in order to solve this equation for the number of cavalry, we get a new version of this, which allows us to directly find the number of cavalry given any percentage. For this example, if we plug in a percentage of 46%, we see that 13 Paladins should have the same overall effectiveness versus Arbalests as 28 Cavaliers. We can see that this army is only about 46% as large, but also that the cost to create both armies was basically the same. This means that at any number below 13 Cavaliers, it's more cost-effective to create another Cavalier, but at any number above 13, it's better to get the Paladin upgrade. In other words, versus Arbalests, it's very important to get the Paladin upgrade because it drastically increases their performance. We can repeat this same process using the data I gathered in the last video for all the other matchups, say versus Champions or versus Genoese Crossbowmen. If we look at these numbers, we'd only need 20 Cavaliers or less to theoretically justify the Paladin upgrade versus these units, or 40 or more versus these units. Now, step back from the math a minute, and definitely do not take these numbers as law. They're more of what you'll call guidelines than actual rules. Instead, it show you when it might make more sense mathematically to wait for the upgrade and instead make more Cavaliers. 
However, if I'm being honest with myself, there is so much these numbers and formulas simply cannot account for. They don't account for how valuable it is to win certain engagements. They can't account for how you keep your stables working without banking too much resources. They can't account for whether or not you should change units. In other words, while I do think the numbers illustrate very well the relative power of Cavaliers to Paladins, they don't do that well at showing you when you should get the upgrade in a real game, despite my attempts. This means that to fully answer this question, I need to step away from the math and instead look at a real game strategy. However, I'm a deathmatch player, so I simply don't have the experience in random app in order to give a good overview of this. As such, I decided to interview one of the best random map players. Tato is currently ranked the second highest on the Voobly 1 vs 1 random map ladder, and is a core member of Team Secret, previously Team Tyrant, one of the best, if not the best, team in all of Age of Empires 2. Without further ado, let's get into this. So, before we start to examine when and when not to get the Paladin upgrade, I'd briefly like to ask you, on your expert opinion, what are the top two or three attributes that you think make it so powerful? Mm, I would say that is the mobility, the attack, and the HP and armor. Like, they have probably the best attributes for everything, considering that they are not unique unit. So, I think if you have full HP Paladins, they are really, really strong. So they have such high stats, they can just run over everything. Yeah, exactly. Like, it works almost against any unit. I guess, considering not unique unit, the only unit that the standard says against Paladin is Heavy Camel, but I'm not sure if even if 1v1 they beat Paladin. So on 1v1 they kill any other unit. Okay, so to talk about when we'll get the upgrade, I've done some math previously and it approaches this question by saying that it's more cost effective to get the upgrade than to make more Cavaliers versus particular units once we have a certain number of Cavaliers. However, how would you really approach the question? Hmm, it's a good question. I mean, it depends a lot on the situation. If you have the map control, if you need to fight or you can avoid the fight until you get Paladin, but usually it depends if you have to make damage or if you are forced to engage. Because if you feel like, okay, they are pushing so hard, I will not have time to get Paladin. It's better maybe to mass more Cavaliers and then try to engage with maybe 15, 20 more Cavaliers than waiting for Paladin because maybe it's too late. Just an example, imagine if you are pocket and you have a Paladin Sif, let's say Persian, and then your opposite pocket is something with helps, let's say Kelts. Okay? It's obviously that they will transition into Habadiers. So if you are fast enough to Imperial, you don't want to wait until Paladin. You want to go for Cavalier attack. Because if you wait for Paladin, maybe he reach Imperial and he will have Cavalier. It's better to fight, let's say, Cavalier versus Fightman than Paladin versus Cavalier. Okay, so it's more of a time issue then, that you make sure you want to get it and not miss that window of opportunity? Yeah, exactly. Like, obviously, in high level uh, games, usually you don't see how it is, right? Correct. Basically, unit composition. So, you obviously want to get Paladin ASAP because your team can hold for you until you get the Paladin upgrade. Usually, it's really hard to be forced to fight in a team game if you have Cavalier and you are waiting for Paladin. So, in high level team games, you need to wait for Paladin. You kind of have to try to research Paladin ASAP. I mean, it's better to research Paladin than having 10 Cavaliers probably in the field because those 10 Cavaliers maybe are a threat for you, but your teammates, they will have army to deal with. So I don't think it's a problem if you don't make any army and you prioritize Paladin upgrade. So to clarify, you're saying that in team games, get Paladin almost as soon as you can, but in one verse ones, it's about hitting that window of opportunity? Not necessarily, it depends on the team games you are playing. Like if you're playing casual team games and you can uh, run on civilizations, you can have the scenario set like Paladin Pocket versus Havadi Pocket. That is really uncommon on TI level team games because usually if you are playing Arabia, you want fast mobility ships. So usually you will have face probably Paladin as well. Okay, that makes sense. Moving on, how important is your economy when making this decision? How do you really take it into account? But it depends on how long have you been playing Castle 8, usually, and if there are extra goals or not. We have faced the problem that, for example, in a step, usually the goals spawn like weirdly or different. So sometimes they are both in the same team. So that forced you to not have extra goals. Having extra goals is really important when you are going Paladin as pocket as well, or do you want to transition to Paladins? Yeah, and you need to start trade ASAP. I mean, it's really important to have at least 50 trade casts running when your goal is about to end. Otherwise, you will struggle with gold. Okay, imagine a few situations in which you have access to the Paladin, but you have access also to some other strong alternatives. In which situations would you get the Paladin, and when would you switch? When would you use both? 
I guess it depends a lot on your team composition. Imagine if you are only the mid-seal sieve there, so you are kind of forced to play Paladin, even if they are not cost-efficient there, but you don't have any other unit that can do that job. Another option would be if your team is playing heavy on the other side and you are alone and you need to kind of face Havadir so you cannot receive help from your teammates. So then you can mix some other units to deal with the Havadirs while you have Paladin. But usually you need to be active. That's the power of the unit. You need to raid. You cannot stay defensive with Paladins. It doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, exactly. If you go Paladins and your opponent goes Halberdiers and then you raid in the back of their base, they have to run all the way back with the Halbs. And then if you run back to your base, they have to run all the way back. That's not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah, yeah. It depends on the momentum and the, if you're playing team games. I, in team games, it's more common to go for Kamens just because you need to follow him. It's what we said about mobility is really important. It doesn't make sense in team games if you make like 40 pikemen to defend against Paladin because then he will avoid you and he will raid one of your teammates and then you will have to run with your pikemen or halberdiers to defend him. In team games, I prefer more Camel as well because you can trade so gold should be no a problem in long term. While on 1v1 I prefer Pac-Man because you can take care of yourself and trading gold units versus not gold units like trash units like Havadir is always good for you. Like gold is way more important in 1v1 than Tinge. Now I'd like to ask you about the Byzantines and the Celts, because in Deathmatch you'd still make their Paladins because it's a strong unit. But how does this change in random map because of all the upgrades they're missing? I think it's more common in Deathmatch because you have all the technologies, right? So you don't have to invest that much on them. You can make 10 Paladins and it's not a huge investment there. On random map, getting the Paladin upgrade is so expensive. You need a lot of economy. I guess with Byzantines it makes more sense, as we said that the plus four armor is really important. And because as well, you have camel. So if you get all the upgrades, you can go for heavy camel and the switch is quite fast and not too expensive. While Kels basically only have Paladin, right? So do you want to have your strongest unit? And Paladin is not the strongest unit for Kels, it's what Raiders. While Byzantines, probably Paladin is one of the strongest units. I'd also like to ask you about monks. Suppose your opponent's going for these units, would that really stop you from going into a cavalier and later a paladin transition when you get to the imperial age, or would the larger numbers of this age kind of negate the bonuses that the monks have versus the knights? And it, it is obviously good because you can also heal your unit, but usually in Imperial they are like big fights. So it's not like a small fight in Castle 8 when you fight 5 versus 5 knights, you can convert 1 or while you are defending. But on team games there are larger battles there, so it's really hard to micro the monks while you have to do trade, you have to take care of your economy, you have to keep massing units. So I guess that monks are more used on Castle 8 because you can invest more time on, into micro the monks than Imperial 8. Imperial 8 you have to do a lot of stuff there so it's harder to pay attention to monks well thank you very much for the interview that's all the questions i have but thanks a lot <laughs> you're welcome anytime you're right. and so as you can tell that while my methods are interesting they definitely don't answer the question as to when you should get this upgrade you can only know this by experience it's my hope that you have been able to learn from the experiences of one of the best players in the world as always, thanks to my patrons Ethan Brown, Jacob Peterson, John Kumanel, Elite Chuko Noob, Sir Lawrence and Z, and Sir Noobalot. Chances are they've already seen this video, because as a patron you get early access to my videos, as well as access to scripts, custom wallpapers, and, if you really, really want it, a video on the topic of your choice. Anyway, thanks for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed this, I know I have, and I'll see you next time.